Taylor Lautner was poised to be the next big thing when the Twilight Saga was at its peak, dot and then he just wasn't. What went wrong? Twilight hype died Lautner's Twilight co-stars Kristen Stewart and Robert Pattinson were clever with their careers. While still attached to the franchise, they both starred in other films, like Adventureland, 2009, and Water for Elephants, 2011. When Man v. Food first began airing on the Travel Channel back in 2008, it became a sensation almost immediately, launching its largely unknown star, actor Adam Richman, into celebrity status as he traveled the nation battling massive mounds and spicy dishes so searing they were almost weaponized. As a result, the duo had an easier time transitioning to other roles post-Twilight. Lautner, however, had only a bit part in Valentine's Day 2010 to tide him over until the franchise was over. A source told The Hollywood Reporter, it's not easy to move out of the shadow of a hit like Twilight. While Richman had appeared on several shows before, this was his breakout. But he's still very young. And little wonder why. From 72-ounce steaks to plates piled high with fries to the hottest wings in town and everything in between, Richman ate and quipped his way through four years of the show before rather abruptly ending his run in 2012. Richman later admitted that he had grown depressed and unhappy with himself due to his weight gain and poor health largely predicated by the way he had to eat to make the show work. There's time for Taylor to become more than just Jacob. Unfortunately, it may be too late now for Lautner to escape the shadow of the supernatural drama. His first star vehicle bombed Lautner was the marquee name in 2011's Abduction, but the movie didn't do well at all. The film was critically panned, earning a measly Metascore of 25, and it only scored a 4% on Rotten Tomatoes. Man v. Food was off the air for the next four years until the Travel Channel decided to reboot it with a new host, Casey Webb, in 2017. After leaving the show centered on competitive eating, Richman lost weight, reportedly shedding 60 pounds in all, and got himself in shape. That wouldn't be so bad if the box office numbers were better, but the flick made only $28 million domestically, not even breaking even on its $35 million budget. An agent told The Hollywood Reporter, his first movie just wasn't very good, and it didn't justify what he was asking for at the time. And on that note, his acting has left much to be desired for most stars, acting requires emoting, not just the removal of one's shirt. He stayed active in the food world, hosting several other programs and appearing as a judge on others. While the reasons for Richmond's leaving Man v. Food are anything but funny, his run on the show was always amusing, even when things did not go according to plan. Or perhaps all the more so when things did not go that way. Ghost Pepper Hot Wings almost created a medical emergency for Adam Richman rarely afraid of super spicy anything, on one occasion Adam Richman was forced to quit just two wings into a five hot wing challenge. He was attempting the rather crassly named Fire in Your Hole challenge at Munchie's 420 Cafe wherein a competitor must simply east five of the restaurant's spiciest wings. There was a 95% failure rate to the challenge, due to the fact that the wings were coated in a sauce made from ghost peppers. Richman was quickly reduced to panting and stumbling about behind the restaurant, drinking milk and sucking on ice cubes, and fearing he was going to pass out. When Lautner was expected to do the former, well, it didn't go over so well. The reviews for Abduction didn't speak highly of Lautner's ability, or lack thereof. Movie Line's Alison Wilmore wrote, This may be the first film I've ever seen where when an actor goes to put his hand thoughtfully on his chin, it's so awkward I became afraid he'd somehow miss and poke himself in the eye. The Village Voice said Lautner, looks like a stranger in his own performance. Abduction's flimsy story wouldn't have weighed so heavily on Lautner's resume if his performance wasn't so clearly part of the problem. He's too expensive studios just don't think Lautner is worth the money he thinks he deserves, and they might be right. A source told Vulture that Lautner's talent agency did a brilliant job of convincing Hollywood that he's the next big movie star, but didn't convince audiences of the same. Lautner demanded $5 million for abduction. It later emerged that the staff of Café had engaged in some foul play, doctoring the recipe of the already fantastically spicy wings with a bottle of chili extract, adding so much heat as to make the wings all but impossible to eat and likely not even safe for consumption. When that bombed, studios could no longer justify the $7. Five million he asked for to star in Stretch Armstrong, yes, that Stretch Armstrong, and the whopping $10 million to star in the retelling of the biblical David and Goliath. The heat and spice Richmond experienced was likely akin to that of being assaulted with pepper spray used by law enforcement or in self-defense. 
Richmond later called what the café did, cavalier and very dangerous, and was understandably upset to have been taken advantage of unfairly, not to mention robbed of the chance to fairly take on the, fire in your hole, challenge. Now, let's never talk about said challenge again. Adam Richmond regularly goofed off in the outtakes it's always hard to know which scenes are going to make the cut while a television program is being filmed, and often some of the funniest and most memorable moments are those that unfortunately end up on the proverbial cutting room floor instead of in the show. Such was the case when Adam began clowning around in the kitchen during a visit to Rochester, New York, first imitating Olympic speed skate Apollo Ono by, skating, back and forth on the greasy kitchen floor and then by, working out, his triceps by pressing down on a massive hamburger he'd soon be attempting to eat. In the outtake clip, Richmond said, everyone thinks I'm unathletic, before proceeding to complete the amusing exercises. Knowing now how much the host of Man V. Food was suffering from depression brought on by his weight and lack of fitness makes the clip a little less amusing when watched in its entire context. Both movies were shelved indefinitely. Another source told Vulture, I remember when Universal co-chairman Donna Langley cast him in Stretch Armstrong, she said to me, he's the real deal. And I thought, based on what? Based on Twilight. Tracers never even got a theatrical release Tracers was Lautner's second attempt at a leading role. It came four years after his dismal first outing as a leading man in abduction and three years after the conclusion of the Twilight series. Knowing that he went on to get leaner and healthier, however, brings solace. In fact, Richmond would eventually switch to eating multiple small 150-calorie meals daily and exercising enough to where he stripped naked and did a photoshoot, covered by soccer balls where needed, for Cosmopolitan, a testament he was happier with his body. His turnaround was impressive. Adam Richmond casually bit into a pepper during a monologue. Not realizing how spicy it was we have all had those moments where we casually do something without thinking only seconds later to realize how bad an idea it was. That should have been enough time for Lautner to distance himself from the franchise and start establishing a more varied resume. Unfortunately, the film never even got a U.S. from spilling a cup of coffee when turning your wrist to check the time to touching a hot stove to saying out loud what should have stayed quiet, it's a common occurrence for us all. Most often, however, our little unthinking moments are not captured by the camera. For Adam Richman, often they were, such as was the case when he casually took a bite of a hot pepper while recording a monologue for an episode set in New Mexico. At the end of his remarks, Richman casually takes a huge bite out of the pepper he has been holding, and you can see within a second or two that he has made a grave error. Richman's hands raise, his shoulders tremble, his mouth is agape, and his expression clearly reads, why? Spicy ramen made Adam Richman weep, yet he finished the challenge Adam Richman once again put himself in danger of passing out, and likely went on some sort of spirit journey while eating a massive bowl of super spicy ramen. Theatrical release and only pulled in $2.8 million internationally. With a combined 26% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, the consensus on this flick was not good. And actually, drinking it is more the operative, because it was in the last minutes of his challenge as he slaked down the fiery broth that he truly entered a circle of hell. Apparently, thousands of people have tried to eat an entire bowl of the spiciest ramen at Orichan Ramen, yet only a few hundred have succeeded. In fact, Steve Tilly of the Toronto Sun was particularly grating, opening his review with, at the end of Twilight, poor shirtless werewolf Jacob didn't manage to get the girl. Richmond joined the hallowed ranks of the latter, but not without sweat and tears flowing as he took on the challenge. And if he's not careful, Taylor Lautner isn't going to get a career, either. With Lautner logging exactly zero big studio films and only two short-lived TV parts in the two years since Tracers, Tilly seems to have hit the nail on the head. The ridiculous six was just that Lautner seems to have gotten in tight with Adam Sandler as of late, landing a bit part in Grown Ups 2 and a supporting role in the SNL alum's first collaboration with Netflix, The Ridiculous Six. That would be great, except we're long past the Sandler who delivered goofball classics Billy Madison and Happy Gilmore. This is the Sandler who has now put Little Nicky, Jack and Jill, and Pixels out into the world, so appearing in one of his movies no longer has the clout that it used to. This is especially true of The Ridiculous Six, Sandler's parody of The Magnificent Seven, which not only has the distinction of pulling a whopping 0% on Rotten Tomatoes but also happened to stir up a lot of controversy over perceived racist jokes. 
He first consumed the noodles and other ingredients and then began to slurp at the remaining broth which is spiced with the restaurant's secret recipe that apparently other chefs have tried repeatedly to steal. Richmond completed the special number two challenge in the allotted 30 minutes, looking hilariously miserable while he did so. Two atoms were defeated by stuffed 12 egg omelettes what can you really expect when a man tries to eat a 12 egg omelette other than him not finishing said omelette, right? Such was the case when Adam Richmond visited Seattle, Washington's Beth's Cafe. As it happened, Richmond sat down next to another gent also named Adam and both tried to take on the Southwestern Exposure Challenge wherein they tried to eat an omelet consisting of a full dozen eggs and that is stuffed with beef brisket and other, Southwestern-style fixings. Perhaps even more remarkable than the fact that the two Adams came quite close to finishing the Southwestern Exposure Challenge omelettes is the fact that apparently about 1 in 10 people do complete all of the food involved. For these two eaters, they came close both comically, and literally, threw in the towel with looks of utter misery on their faces. The real kicker is that it turns out local Adam had once bested the mighty breakfast. According to the Indian Country Today Media Network, via Variety, Several Native American actors left the set after taking offense to racially charged jokes and inaccuracies during the filming of the movie, including costume inaccuracies and characters allegedly named Beaver's Breath and No Bra. Sandler later chalked the whole thing up to being taken out of context and said that the film was a pro-Indian movie. Critics thought otherwise, labeling the film horrid, a multifaceted bomb, and replete with lazy, racist jokes. Yeesh. Lautner would probably do well to just leave that one off of his reel. Lautner's passion project was met with apathy in 2016. Lautner took on the film Run the Tide, an indie drama with no budget and no big studio backing. It couldn't have been farther from his twilight roots or his attempts at becoming an action hero. Lautner described the film in a Metro interview as, a passion project for everyone involved. Unfortunately, it was a risk that didn't pan out. Reviews were dismal. The AV Club labeled it, bargain basement schmaltz, too blandly folksy even for Sundance. The young folks claimed, the emotion felt forced and it lacked authenticity, and that the film, is best as a lifetime movie special of the week. The review even zeroed in specifically on Lautner's performance, saying, he just doesn't fit, in such a dramatic role, and that, he just isn't very believable, as much as he tries to be. Is it any surprise that Lautner seems to take a sabbatical after this? He's been linked to lots of fomances Lautner has had a lot of famous girlfriends with suspiciously convenient timing. He, dated, Lily Collins when they were promoting abduction in 2011. When that didn't generate quite enough buzz, they made headlines when Us Weekly reported that they broke up a week before the premiere. When he had a cameo in Grown Ups 2 in 2013, the Daily Mail noted that he was dating actress Micah Monroe shortly before the movie hit theaters. He dated his Tracers co-star Marie Abgaropoulos, but E! Online reports that they split shortly after the film debuted. Lautner's most famous flame was Taylor Swift, who he dated for a few months from late 2009 to 2010. What makes that pairing suspicious? Well, they broke up after their movie, Valentine's Day, hit theaters in 2010, and he seems to be one of the few exes that Swift hasn't penned a bitter song about. In fact, the Taylors were actually friendly post-split, per MTV News. That's very unlike her, especially if the relationship was real. Another werewolf replaced him Twilight fans who were, Team Jacob, have likely moved on to other hot lycanthropes. Dylan O'Brien looks a bit like Lautner and stars in MTV's Teen Wolf series, and his acting chops receive much better reviews. Additionally, O'Brien found success in an action franchise, starring in 2014's The Maze Runner and its sequels. He's not career-focused right now while promoting Run the Tide. Lautner expressed his desire to expand his professional resume, which includes him being pickier about the roles he'll choose moving forward. When asked by ABC News if he was worried about being pigeonholed by his Twilight role, Lautner said, that's kind of why I want to choose things that are different. While he considers his career's direction, Lautner's really not in any hurry to get back on a movie set. He even spelled out his intentional slowdown in even more specific terms to Reuters in November 2016, saying, For me the biggest thing is just surrounding myself with people that I love, just spending time, it doesn't matter what I'm doing as long as I'm with my friends and my family. You know, I could be sitting in a cardboard box and that's where I'm happiest. Did he pause his career for love?
Lautner and Billy Lord met on the set of Scream Queens, and their on-screen romance spilled over into real life. According to People, Lord and Lautner's rumored relationship began in December 2016, just before Lord tragically lost both her mother, Star Wars actress Carrie Fisher, and grandmother, iconic actress Debbie Reynolds, just one day apart. Lautner attended the joint funeral for the screen legends, and from there, their whirlwind romance was well documented on Instagram, with Lautner posting photos of the couple jet setting all over the world. According to Lord's uncle, Todd Fisher, the relationship was as serious as it was adorable. The truth of the matter is, the guy is pretty spectacular, Todd told E! News. He's a really deep person, and he has supported her amazingly. He stepped up and acted like a husband would act. Not that that's what's going on, but it's just an amazing support system for her, and I'm glad he's in her life. That's not easy for me to say, if you think about it. However, by July 2017, Lord and Lautner were over as a couple, although they, are still friendly, according to a source for People. Is it possible that Lautner pressed the pause button on acting for this reverse May to December romance? He might work with Greg Davies of Cuckoo again one of the brighter spots in Lautner's career has been the gamble he took replacing Andy Samberg's character on the BBC comedy Cuckoo. Playing completely against type, Lautner stepped into a role that had him navigating the tricky waters of dry British humor, but he apparently nailed it. According to The Telegraph, Lautner was, very good indeed. Series co-star Greg Davies also had nothing but praise for Lautner, telling Metro in November 2017, that he's kept in touch with Lautner since the series ended. Davies hinted that they may work together in the future. It's an unlikely friendship. We're doing two more series next year. I get on really well with him. He's a thoroughly decent chap. Granted, that's not a confirmation that Lautner is on board but it sure seems like he's got an open invitation and a critically lauded avenue to pursue should he choose to accept it.